Today we're gonna to talk about the NUMA 4. I have a bunch of different gear for it here to share with you. Um, first thing I'm gonna get into is a little bit about the machine. The machine is the size of a grip, where um, even the smallest machine out there is still about twice the length, I'd say. There are some pretty short machines, but not as short as this guy. Um, even with the battery pack on the end of this thing, you're like much shorter than a standard machine still. So it's actually pretty cool with a battery like this because it reminds me more of a traditional style machine, which I use most of my career. So um, let's get into the grip sizes. NUMA has a couple of different grip sizes. There's three. And here's a mid-range guy. Best to show you in all stainless. The cool thing about having the different grip sizes besides the comfort for people's hands in the different materials and even in the same material you're increasing a little bit of weight with each size grip that you go up so Carson Hill has been able to create one of the lightest machines that are out there to one of the heaviest machines that are out there if you pair this in any grip size with an aluminum grip you have an ultra light rotary if you like a little bit more weight like I do for lining you have a really heavy rotary and I'm going to give you guys uh, the weights on this in a little bit but to have a versatile machine where a lot of people like a heavyweight liner to drop larger lines you're going to get that with this NUMA. He's got many different cams that you can buy online and what each cam does there are different profiles. Your profiles will let you get in the skin faster and retract out of the skin faster or go into the skin slower and smoother and retract out of the skin a little slower. So your faster ones are going to be what you want for a liner. You don't want to have to wait for a slower rotary machine to draw, draw a line really slow because it spends too much time in the skin. So you're going to use what's called his 20% cam. The cycle on that cam is in the skin 20% of its entire rotation. So that's going to be perfect for your liner. That comes in a 3.6 and a 4.2. Um, what I use for shading is the 33% or the 40%. The 40% cam is more like a swash plate. It slides into the skin nice and easy and rolls out of the skin nice and easy. That's going to give you um, great saturation, uh, super easy on the skin, uh, really nice shading. Um, it doesn't compromise any saturation at all even though it's moving in and out of the skin a little slower. Uh, there's a 33% cam which is an asymmetrical cam that Carson and I collaborated on. This is going to go in the skin like a 40 and come out of the skin like a 20. So it's going to leave a slightly smaller dot while still saturating at the same rate. What I think is cool about that is you could do a little bit more building and blending and not really have to worry about overworking the skin where sometimes if you stay in the skin too long with a, a standard swash plate, you could do that. Um, He's got many variations. They go from 2.7, 3.6, 4.2. All around, I'll use the 3.6 for pretty much everything, but the 4.2 I like to use when I'm doing really large liner groups, say like 14 round liners, 18 round liners, and if I'm working on an area of the body where the skin is much harder to stretch. Um, other than that, I'll use even a 3.6 for up to say like an 11 round liner on most parts of the body. So to start out, if you're going to grab two cams in a machine, I would recommend 20% uh, for lining in the 3.6 and then say a standard uh, cam, which would be great for shading would be your 40% or your 33. Either one of those you're going to be versatile with. If you, if you like to pack color a little faster, grab a 40%. If you like to build and blend a little bit more, your 33% will be great for that. Both of them will do it. One is a little more of a blender, the 33. The other one's a little faster, the 40, in my opinion. Um, one of the last things I'm going to talk to you guys about, which is really important, is these aluminum bearing arms here. So the aluminum bearing arms are uh, different weights, and what that's going to give you, and that's what drives your cam, that's going to give you a harder strike force or a softer strike force. So again, you're creating a different machine with these. I'm always using the brass arm with my liners because I like the force behind that machine. But I couldn't live without this guy for my shader. It's too hard hitting a machine for me with just the brass one. So this is the go-to for all my shading, all my color work. It's actually awesome. It's like having two different machines again. 
And um, if you don't have two Numas, you don't buy two Numas. I keep two set up for efficiency. But if you only want one, this drops right in. There's a, a tiny little QA in the side of the frame there and takes one turn for you to hold it in place. And again, the change this thing out is super quick. You just drop it right out, change it out to the other one. So if you do all your lining with the brass, you can in you know about 30 to 45 seconds, take your grip off, change your, change your cam, change your bearing arm, and you're good to go for all your shading work. It's very simple, it's very easy. Uh, he has two different springs as well. This is the one that comes with the machine here, this small one. Uh, your lighter spring is gonna allow you to um, do like uh, slower voltages, uh, stipple work, slow shading, where your, your resistance on your stiffer spring is going to require you to run your voltage a little bit higher to get it to start up. That's better if you run your machine faster, which like most color artists do, um, fast lining, uh, efficient coloring. I use this one and a bunch of other guys I know use this one and like it. Um, this will make your machine run a little easier on the lower voltages. Um, either one is fine. If you're going to go and order it, I'd say just get both springs and see what you like better because I have friends that also just use this lightweight spring. It just depends on where you're at and how fast you run your machines. For example, my coloring and shading, I'm doing all of my work at uh, 7 to 7.5 seven volts. And for lining, I'm up there right at like nine volts. I push it a little past because I'm using a battery pack, so it's a little more forgiving. So I'll go to like 9.2 sometimes on the battery pack, which doesn't have quite as much juice as like a Musotoku power supply. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys real quick um, how I set the machine up. Carson has a video out, which is, um, it's pretty cool to show everyone how you can seat the spring and, and get the, you know, the spring to stay in the grip and not have to worry about it. Well, every time you take your machine apart, you know, your cam sits in there loosely anyway. So your cam will just drop right out. So your spring is gonna find its center because there's a groove on the cam that's made for that spring. I just drop this spring right in. I don't seat it with a tool or anything. I've got my cam inside my machine here and I literally just put the two pieces together you're not gonna lose a cam or lose a spring. You're not gonna throw it out in your setup because you're gonna be aware that you have your cams on your setup. So to have the spring stay in the grip is just one extra step that I don't even think is necessary. It's never not going to seat itself correctly. So again, let me show you guys some of the pros and cons of this thing. Um, pros of this machine, definitely the most versatile as far as the types of hits you can get, your stroke lengths, your uh, strong hits versus soft hits, your uh, soft entry versus hard entry. The cams and the aluminum bearing arms really do create its, um, it can become any machine you really want it to with your cam options. Um, like I said, 20% or 3.6 for lining, 33 or 40 for shader are definitely where you're gonna wanna start. That's the most standard. Um, but one of the coolest features besides the size of the machine being the size of a grip is your weights. Any rotary that's ultra lightweight um, is going to be a little more difficult to do large liners lining with if, I, if you ask me. I think that the weight behind a liner is super important. I can see a difference in my lines whether I'm using this heavier stainless grip or I decided just to rock with the aluminum one and it's more of a struggle. You're gonna stretch more and you're gonna push harder if you don't have the weight to back that machine and you're relying on your hand a little more, which is unnecessary for large, like large line work sessions. You're just, you know, you're exhausting yourself when the machine could be doing the work for you. So I'm gonna throw a bearing arm back in the machine here just to show everybody again how easy it is. Drop that thing in there. The bearing arm has a little groove out of the center. That's for the cam to sit inside. So you always wanna keep this thing face up. All right, so I'm gonna set the machine up to show you guys how quick and easy it is right from the go. Like I said, I have two machines set up all the time, so I don't even go through this process. I'm not familiar with it, I'm not fast at it. And this is how easy it is. My bearing arm is in, my cam is in. Drop my spring and my grip and I'm good to go. All right, so 
you're a one machine guy, but you really want to use that brass bearing arm to do your liner work. Again, I'll show you how fast this thing is to break down. Groove always goes up, sits right on top. It's in, it's locked down, drop the cam in, liner time. Um, what did that take me? 20 seconds, 25 seconds. It's super easy and not very cumbersome. So if you get all your line work done, double check your line work, make sure it's clean, make sure it's solid, make sure you don't have to go back over anything. Break the machine down, switch your cam out if you, if you want to in your bearing arm, you're good to go for shading. Good batteries, any type of battery really. This isn't even a good battery, but um, the motor that he uses in this is compatible with every battery that's out there. I've had some other machines that the batteries aren't working as well as a power supply would. I don't have that experience with this at all. So even the cheapest batteries you can get your hands on are 100% useful with this NUMA, and you don't even notice the weight back there at all. Kind of counterbalances this machine just like a little bit, which is kind of nice, like an old school machine would be. So some of the pros I've found with this machine is that I've never really had a rotary before that was a great liner. Everyone says, I can line fine with this machine. I, oh, I could, you know, I can get through anything with whatever. And then you see them lining. They line really slow because they have to line slow. Your swash plate is forcing you to line slower. This machine for me is as fast, actually faster than any efficient coil I've ever used. And um, my line work is super crisp and sharp. It's dense and it's solid. And um, I've never had anything with that prior to, say, a Dan Coopin. That thing would drop some serious lines. And this is equivalent to that for me. The force behind this thing, especially for a cartridge, and the fact that it's only in the skin 20% of the time, I'm not getting little wiggles and walks in my lines with the cartridge anymore the way I used to. Um, my lines are as clean, if not cleaner, than they were when I used coils. Um, and as far as shading goes, it's with the battery that I'm using here, I'm getting what's uh, what people are considering today a digital give. Uh, my battery isn't going to give me at a lower voltage the same amount of power that the Muso Toku is going to give me. So I feel like the machine has give even though it's a direct drive. That coupled with the cam that I'm using, the 33 to the 40% cam, how easy it enters into the skin. It feels almost like it has the tiniest bit of give that it's bogging down. It's allowing me to saturate colors really well, um, do some nice soft blends when I need to. Uh, black and gray is really awesome with this thing, and the color packing and color blending are really awesome with it too. Um, I'll try to put in some examples here of some of the line work that I've done with the NUMA, as well as some of the color work so you guys can see what the saturation is like and uh, what, what the lines look like. It's a, it's a really versatile machine, and it's definitely one that I think people will enjoy having in their toolbox, even if they you know only buy a machine once in a blue. This is one you'll utilize and have a use for that you really won't put down. All right, so I'll mention a little bit about cons with this machine. It more of a uh, more of a wish, if anything, right? There's there's definitely no downside to this machine, except for when you're ready to break it down. Just be cautious that you don't end up throwing out a cam in your setup. Are they hard to lose? Absolutely not. I've been using this machine since March and I haven't lost one yet. Um, I haven't lost a spring yet. It's not a tiny spring that goes flying across the room and you can't find it, which is kind of cool. Um, I like the fact that everything breaks down very easy and that this grip is a one-piece grip. It's super easy to clean and sanitize and having your stainless option or your aluminum for the weight is awesome. Um, 
but I would like to see uh, in a in like a you know a V2 model or like a, a later version of this machine a a way to keep your cam in place if you never change your cam so that you don't even have to worry about where did it go when I dropped it. Like I said, is that a con? No, that's ridiculous. You're not going to lose these things. Um, but a couple of Wannesees that I'd like to see in uh, future versions of this machine would be uh, something, maybe um, two models, maybe like a model that has a separate option and a model that's a little um, upgraded or elevated for uh, integrated battery. That would be pretty rad. An integrated battery or a battery that locked into the neurals on the grip here uh, on the back side of the machine housing so that it kind of became uh, one piece. Something that didn't feel like, you know, a little that, that it could be a little floppy or a little loose. Something that actually truly locked into the machine or a version of the machine that had an integrated system in it with voltage up and down. People are doing them a lot of different ways now. Uh, there's more minimalist machines out there that don't even have voltage on them. But I'm a guy that likes 0.1 increments on my batteries and my power supplies. I'll, I'll see a difference between whether I'm tattooing at 7 volts or 7.2. And I think a lot of tattoo artists would agree. So a battery system that's got multiple uh, 0.1 increments is really cool. Um, but that would be just a, a wish list for something like this down the road. Maybe even um, an integrated battery housing that would allow you to use a standardized battery. One that you could pick up at any battery shop rather than having to have, you know, uh, what a couple of the other brands have uh, a battery that's $200 a piece. And if something were to go wrong with that battery, you have to send that thing back out for service. Whereas if one of your batteries starts to go on a, a standardized housing, you could just pop that battery out, drop a new one in, and everything's still good to go. That's pretty much it for the NUMA. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or um, reach out to me by DM on Instagram, typ.art. I'd be happy to answer any questions there. Um, if I did miss anything in this video, uh, don't be shy. Just get a hold of me. I love to talk to people. I've got a lot of DMs coming through about uh, tattoo machine reviews I've done already, and I actually enjoy spending the time talking to people about it. So um, look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.